What's going on, family? I'm Scrapbook Boxing. The Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff series will continue its conversation with you. Concerning the complete history of boxing, on July 2nd, 1925, the world middleweight champion, Pittsburgh Windmill Harry Greb, and the world welterweight champion, Toy Bulldog Mickey Walker, will go head-to-head -head on a three-fight card. Harry Greb will defeat Mickey Walker in 15 rounds in defense of his middleweight championship strap. At the end of the contest, Mickey Walker and Harry Greb will get into a shoving match. All Harry Greb tried to do was extend his hand to shake the hands of Mickey Walker. And for that reason, these two men would get into a melee. Unfortunately for the referee, Ed Purdy, he would get knocked down while trying to break up the wrestling hole. Harry Greb would go to the hospital after fracturing his knee. He fractured it on the mat. And he would have to take time to solve that issue. Two great fighters, one unfortunate circumstance. Saturday, July 4th, 1925, Canadian bantamweight, 17-year-old babyface assassin Jimmy McLaurin would defeat flyweight champion 23-year-old Pancho Villa in 10 rounds. The contest took place at the Oakland PA ballpark at Emeryville. Now, Pancho Villa, unfortunately, would have a tooth extracted that morning, and then he would fight Jimmy McLaurin in that same evening, something you never do. Unfortunately for Pancho Villa, July 14th, he would die in a hospital from a mouth infection that was spread to his throat. Now, the New York SAC commissioner would proclaim Frankie Gennaro Pancho's successor. He would take on Fidel LaBarba. He would now become the world undisputed flyweight champion of the world. Now, Pancho Vila was 23 years old. He stood 5 foot 1. He had a 63-inch reach, had a total bout career of 90 bouts, 7 losses, 4 draws, and 22 knockouts. As for Jimmy McLaurin, he was 17 years old. He stood 5 foot 6 inches and had a 67 inch reach. He had a record of 22 wins, 1 loss, and 2 draws, with 5 knockouts coming into that contest. He defeated fighters such as Memphis Powell Moore and Charles Bud Taylor. Now, he would lose to Charles Bud Taylor. He would defeat Fidel Barber. He would defeat Teddy Silver and have a draw with Memphis Powell Moore. I'm going to show you Teddy Silver in a moment. His name comes up quite often in this series. So I believe it's fitting that I show you what he looks like. But before we talk about Teddy Silver, born December 19th, 1907 in Ireland, Jim McLaurin would run through Canada. He would die October 28th, 2004. He was 96 years of age at the time of his death, and he would reside in Glendale, California. He had a total bout career of 69 bouts. 55 wins, 11 losses, 21 knockouts. He was stopped once and had three draws. I had the pleasure of meeting Jimmy McLaurin. He was something else. And I think I told you this in the prior video. He talked to me about the Benny Leonard bout. He talked to me about the time when he faced young Corbett III. Corbett III was a southpaw. And he knocked him out in one round. And that was... Electrifying, to say the least. He had three bouts with Barney Ross, a very good Jewish boxer who was born in Manhattan. And at the age of five, he would be relocated by his family to Chicago. His father would get shot because he owned a little, uh, I guess you would call it a soda pop store, where you can get ice cream and we call it a corner store, where you have like an old bodega, if you will. And he owed the mob some money. He was unable to make a payment, and they killed him. So Barney Ross had to deal with that. Now, Young Pharaoh and Joey Sungor would be two of the fighters that Jimmy McLaurin would be in the ring with. Let me show you a picture of a very good fighter, by the way, by the name of Teddy Silver. I just had to pull out a scrapbook of mine. So this is Bantamweight California and Teddy Silver, a very good fighter. I talk about him often, so I felt that you needed to see what he looked like. This is Teddy Silver, very, very good fighter. And you hear his name quite often in a lot of the fighters that we talk about. Teddy Silver. July 13th, 1925, 24-year-old Jimmy Goodwrench. Knocks out 20-year-old Stanislas Luxasa in two rounds. Now, 
Jimmy McGoodrench stood five foot four inches. He had a 65 and a half inch reach. Lizarza stood five foot six inches. He had a record of 29 wins and 19 KOs. He would become the lightweight champion of the world. I'm speaking of Jimmy Goodrich. When Benny Leonard would vacate the lightweight championship title at the Queensboro Stadium in Long Island in Queens, New York. Referee was Ed Smith and he calls the fight in second round. Jimmy Goodrich, his name was James Edward Morgan. He was born July 30th, 1900 in Scranton, Pennsylvania. He died September 24th, 1982 in Buffalo, New York. He stood five foot four inches and had a 65 and a half inch reach. He was a lightweight with a total bout career of 140 bouts, eight wins, 34 losses, 21 draws, 12 knockouts, and he was never stopped. So when you look at Jimmy McLaurin, when you look at Jimmy Goodrich, when you look at Pancho Vila, I mean, these men were the cream of the crop of their division. July 14th, 1925, World Flyweight Champion Filipino great Pancho Vila would die at the age of 23 of blood poisoning, an infection that landed in his throat and clotted there. Jim McLaurin was a very good fighter himself, and he understood clearly, obviously after fact, of what happened. And when I spoke with him, even me talking to him many years later about it, he still had chills as he was speaking. And, you know, knowing that the last fighter who fought you was a man of prominence, and you would be his last opponent. I'm sure that took his toll on Jim McLaurin. Pancho Vila. His name was Francisco Valura. He was born August 1st, 1901 in Philippines. He died July 14th, 1925. He was just 23 years old and he would reside in the Philippines. He stood 5 foot 1 inch. He was a flyweight with a 63 inch reach. Fought from 1919 to 1925. He had a total bout career of 90 fights, 77 wins, 4 losses, and 22 knockouts. He had 4 draws to go with that. He was in a ring with fighters such as Pete Saramento and Mike Ballerino, Abe Goldstein, and Johnny Buff. Bud Taylor, Jim McLaurin, and Frankie Gennaro, just to name a few. He would take the title away from little Jimmy Wilde. What an outstanding fighter Pancho Vila was. September 11th, 1925, the light heavyweight champion, New York's Paul Berlin Batch, knocks out Jim Slattery of Buffalo, New York. They fought at the New York's Yankee Stadium, and Paul Berlin Batch will remain the world light heavyweight champion. September 21st of 1925, world welterweight champion Elizabeth, New Jersey's Toy Bulldog, Irish Mickey Walker, defends his title against Dave Shade. The contest lasted 15 rounds in New York's Yankee Stadium and remains the world welterweight champion. The Walker lost to Dave Shade December 21st, 1921 at the Board Athletic Club in Newark, New York. Who was Dave Shade? His name was Dave Charles. He was born March 3rd, 1902 in California. He would die June 23rd, 1983, the Concord, California. He stood 5 foot 8 inches as well to weight, had a 71 inch reach. He fought from 1918 to 1935, had a total bout career of 225 bouts, 132 wins, 28 losses, and 17 knockouts. Now, he fought fighters such as Danny Kramer and Ever Hammer, Jack Britton, and Pete Latso, Allentown, Joe Gans, Maxie Rosenblum. And Walcott Langford, Jack McVeigh, as well as Al Gaynor. Very good fighter was Dave Shade out of California. You hear me often state the biggest fight he was in, besides the Mickey Walker fight, was with Jimmy Slattery. The contest took place in Jimmy Slattery's hometown, which was 
Buffalo, New York, and that was some contest. It was a big deal, and it turned out to be one hell of a fight. September 25th, 1925, the America's light heavyweight champion, Gene Tunney, would knock out Bartley Matted in three rounds, scheduled for a light heavyweight championship bout, 15 rounds. The contest took place in Minneapolis at the Hockley Arena. And Gene Tunney ends the contest towards the end of the third round, pinning his man to the corner with vicious left hooks, combinations up and down until he got him out of there. Now, Here's the thing. Bartley Madden, he was born September 1st, 1890 in Dublin, Ireland. He would die March 5th, 1930. He was 39 years of age at the time of his death, and he would reside in New York. He stood 5 foot 11 inches. He was a heavyweight with a 70-inch reach. Pretty short for a heavyweight. He fought from 1912 to 1929. He had a total bout career of 40 bouts, 26 wins, 9 losses, 16 knockouts, and he was stopped twice himself. He was in the ring with fighters such as Harry Greb and Harry Wills, Fred Fulton and Tommy Gibbons, Bill Brennan, Joe Jeanette, Baling Levinsky, and Billy Misk. November 13th, world middleweight champion, Pittsburgh windmill Harry Greb defeats Tony Morallo. 15 rounds in New York's Yankee Stadium, and he would remain the world middleweight champion. November 18, 1925, world heavyweight contender, America's light heavyweight champion. 74 wins, one loss, four draws, and 46 knockouts. 28-year-old Gene Tunney defeats Cleveland's 22-year-old. We call him the Cleveland Baker Boy or the Rubber Man, and his name was Johnny Risco. Put him at the public hall in Cleveland. Both Tunney had swallowed a tremendous amount of blood. He was born December 18, 1902 in Austria. He died January 13, 1953 in Cleveland, Ohio. He stood 5 foot 11 inches. He was a heavyweight with a 74 inch reach. He was in the ring with fighters such as Tommy Lachlan, John Henry Lewis, Bob Olin, and Nady Brown, Victoria Compolo, Charlie Ratliff, Polino Uskadon. Big Boy Patterson, Max Bear, Kingfish Levinsky, just to name a few. Now let's discuss one more fight before we end this conversation. February 26, 1926, the Georgia Deacon Theodore Tiger Flowers would dethrone the Pittsburgh windmill, Harry Greb in New York's Madison Square Garden in 15 rounds. He would become the first black world middleweight champion of the world. Let me tell you what's important about that. Theodore Tiger Flowers would win that title in the Mecca, Madison Square Garden. That is extremely, extremely important. Now, he was a southpaw, tall fighter. But why this was significant was because Theodore Tiger Flowers' life was threatened the entire week of that fight, the evening of that fight, and the next morning. So much so that Harry Greb, felt that it was his position to protect Theodore Tiger Flowers. He stayed with him the night before. He stayed with him that evening of. He stayed with him that morning and made sure he made it safely to the train. There were lynchings. There were hangings. Little boys were being punched and spit on, as happened with the fight between Jack, Demps, Jack, uh, Jack Johnson, I always say Jack Dempsey, I don't know why. Jack Johnson and the baller maker Jim Jeffries, July 4th in Reno, Nevada. It was a sad moment, but that's what happened. Theodore Tiger Flowers, who was known as the Georgia Thinking, was born February 11th, 1893 in Camilla, Georgia. He would die. November 16th, 1927, he was 34 years of age at the time of his death, and he would reside in New York. He was a southpaw who would die due to eye injuries. An attempt was made to do a surgical procedure on his eye, and he would die on the operating table, as would Harry Greb, which was fascinating to me a year earlier, 1926. So Theodore Tiger Flowers would face Mickey Walker, who stood 5 foot 7 inches, had a 67 inch reach. 
We'd also be in the ring with Paul Berlinbatch, Jack Sharkey, Harry Greb, Tommy Lachlan, Mike Mateague, Max Schmeling, Kit Norfolk. Kit Norfolk stood five for 10 inches. He had a 74-inch reach, and that was a very interesting match. He had a total bout career at that time, 144 bouts, and he would win 111 of them. He only lost 26 bouts considering the, the um, competition he was in. He was also in the ring with Lee Anderson, who was the color light heavyweight champion. Harry Greb, three times. Theodore Tiger Flowers was a remarkable fighter. He faced Balin Siki, an Alabama kid, Jamaica kid, and Tut Jackson. He was also in the ring with Ted Moore. Now, let me tell you about Jeff Clark, who stood 5 foot 11 inches, had a 79 inch reach. He was born in Marsville, New, New Jersey, and he died in Joplin, Missouri. He was in the ring with fighters such as Harry Wills and Sam McVeigh, Sam Lankford, and Willie Meehan, Kid Norfolk, and battling Jim Johnson. Sam Langford was another fighter that Tiger Flowers was in the ring with. He stood five foot, six and a half inches, had a 74 inch reach. He was in the ring with fighters such as Harry Wills and Bill Tate, Tiger Flowers, young Peter Jackson, Lee Anderson, Stanley Ketchell, Sam McVeigh, Joe Jeanette, and Jersey Joe Walcott, as well as Joe Gans. He was also in the ring with Dave Holly, Fireman Jim Flynn, and Dixie Kidd. He died in 1927 in the hospital trying to remove scar tissue. I'm speaking of the other type of flowers. So, very interesting times. Very interesting circumstances. We'll be talking more about the other type of flowers. I'm going to do another portion of this series, another series within this series, when I'll be talking about some black fighters who really played an important role in this game. I'm Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fistic of Series, stating all great fights and all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. You've been listening to a series of events that happened during the course of history concerning boxing. This will be part 29, I believe, in this series. So look out for part 30 in this series as we get into the 1930s and then eventually the 1940s and beyond. Thanks for listening. Be well. Peace.